I want to share with you my most favorite method of creating abstract landscapes. It's really quite easy if you get some wax paper, some beautiful quality paper if possible, uh, some lovely paint and then a couple of things to embellish at the end. I've got some Posca pens. Oh, plus in the middle, I use some of this pearl powdered pigments. They are just for adding some wonderful sparkle, a really subtle, beautiful glow to the painting. So well, I'm working on a full sheet of watercolor paper. It's quite a large size to work in, but um, a marvelous way to work. It's very freeing to work in a big size. I get the wax paper, tear off quite a few rolls and I make sure that they are as wide as the paper. And then I'm just spending a little while here tearing the pieces of wax paper into shapes that are a little bit like mountains and I spend a while just placing the bits of paper, the bits of wax paper into position. Scrunching it up is how you get the beautiful texture. You can actually get quite a lovely mark if you don't scrunch it up but scrunching I really love because it creates all these beautiful negative lines, negative spaces and positive spaces. So there's the pearl powdered pigment that I mentioned at the beginning. And um, it's that one particular one is blue. You can get it in a whole range of colors. And that's some quinacridone pink that I'm re-wetting so that I can pour it on later. So lots of preparation in terms of the colors first, getting them all ready, wetting them, creating really big, big puddles, um, bigger than puddles. In fact, they're in containers. And that's gonna mean that I will be really liberal about it amount of paint that I pour on. So you can see I've used a large haka brush or I used to call it a hake but apparently it's haka, it's a Japanese word and that's just a really big soft haired brush, it's a uh, goat hair and I'm just using that as a water brush, that's pretty much all I ever do with those brushes though of course you can do absolutely anything with them. Lots of people just paint with haka brushes the placement of the wax paper, I pretty much just put it back into the same position. But I'm making sure that there's beautiful scrunchy marks in it because that's where all those beautiful lines will come from that you see at the end of the painting. These beautiful textural marks. And so you're creating texture with the greatest of ease. I, you'll see that I shake these little specimen bottles over and over. And as I said, it's going to make me generous with the paint because you really have to be prepared to <laughs> waste a bit of paint. It's a, a lot like watercolor pouring, which wastes a fair bit of paint, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Be generous to yourself. Usually there's just you and the paint and the paper. So be generous, use the best stuff on yourself. It's all for you. It's to make you feel good. I think I thoroughly enjoy this part of the process the most. I often think that I'd like to leave the painting just like that. But you've got to remember always that watercolor dries 10 to 15% lighter than you can see, that you see when it is wet. The water itself intensifies the color of the paint. And so it appears shinier and it appears to have more depth. So at this point to the painting, had I stopped, it would not have been near dark enough. So usually if you think the tone is sufficient, add more because when it dries, it won't be sufficient. I've come in there with some beautiful burnt sienna that I had mixed in a specimen jar. And then this is this magnificent blue that I mixed in with the pearl powdered pigment. So it has this fabulous sparkle to it. Lots of blue. I'm adding more and more down the bottom, up the top. And every single time I pick up the board and I give it a little tip. So at this point, I'm thinking about keeping the paint on the page. So I'm tipping back and forth, but trying to keep the paint um, within the masking, within the wax paper. And, um, but in a moment, um, when I've added all of the paint, I'm going to need to tip off the excess because I don't really want back runs in the sky. I thought the sky was absolutely beautiful and it's important to dry it off on a big angle. You want all the excess moisture to be gone and that's when it really does seem like you're in wasting an incredible amount of paint. 
You could live vicariously through this method and use less paint or do it on a smaller sheet if you don't want to waste this much paint. But always remember that your art is just for you and um, if you've bought the paint and it's sitting there in the drawer, why not tip it all over the place in some beautiful jars? You can see I've introduced a little bit of that quinacridone pink in on the far left that's just sitting in that little soy sauce dish. Soy sauce dishes are brilliant for making little puddles of paint that you don't want on your palette for some reason. So that particular pink doesn't sit permanently on my palette and so that's why it's in a little soy sauce dish. Anything that's permanently on my palette, I can make some lovely puddles on that particular Quilla palette. Little touches of pink and then making it shift. So you'll see me doing that over and over and over, picking it up and tipping it in multiple directions depending on where I want the paint to flow. You haven't seen me yet put it on an angle. I do that once I've tipped it um, to the left, to the right, up and down, and then I do the, the angle when I'm getting nearer towards the point of allowing the wax paper to dry. Actually, it's not the wax paper that dries, it's the paper and the paint. So there's some beautiful colors going on there. No brush has contacted uh, any of this paint on the paper. It's all been just tipping and pouring and tipping and pouring. Now, here comes the absolute beauty of using this particular brand of wax paper, cut right wax paper, Reynolds cut right wax paper. And that is that even though it's completely saturated, I can lift it and tear it if I want to, which I did. And underneath the bits of wax paper, you can insert some more paint. So you can see me putting it on with a brush and wipe it around um, and then put it back down and it just sits back in the position that it was in. It's so beautiful to work with. Uh, this particular brand of wax paper. It's really good quality, plus it's biodegradable, so it's better than using plastic. And I'm totally into recycling anything and reducing plastic, stuff like that, which is why <laughs> at the very beginning you saw me using a container. So I'm, I love the idea that you might get some containers and repurpose them. So right at the beginning, you could see a container that um, is actually for flushing out the sinuses. Uh, sorry to say something so banal in the middle of this beautiful watercolor painting, but um, it's got a spout on it, that particular jar. You can't, it's just off screen at the moment up the top there. You can just see it. It's, um, some of you might have recognized it if you've ever had sinus issues. Okay, more tipping. You do want all that excess moisture to be gone. And when those lines release like that, I think that is beautiful. And that's the moment I chose to go on the angle. This is going to give the whole painting some movement. Angles give paintings movement. Just like if you were painting a runner, you would paint a runner on an angle because the runner has a sense of movement. They're on an angle, they've got a forward trajectory. So that's why I've allowed these final marks to pour down in that beautiful uh, oblique angle. Can you say oblique angle, is that tautology? I don't remember. Anyway, I'm coming to the final bits and pieces, squeezing the excess paint onto the um, page by pushing down on the wax paper. And there I'm adding a little bit more pink. You just pull it up and I use the wax paper to squeeze off the excess. I love the idea that there'd be some really beautiful, pure sections of that magnificent pink. You never know to the completely, you are completely at the end, but I love to um, imagine what it might look like. Um, I think I tip it up again in a second because I think I wanted that pink to do some beautiful stripes into the foreground. Also, you can see that the stripes are dissipating in the foreground there. Oh, yep, there you go. I did tip it and um, I'm adding more blue now. 
So you could see that I did tip the pink and it was on an angle. Adding more colour. And so easy to do under. The, it's, there's actually no need to paint on top of the wax paper. The paint does not penetrate the wax paper at all. It's um, quite the opposite. I'm just using the brush to push it down. Okay, there it is going into my drying section. So that's a set of three drawers I have behind my studio chair where I'm sitting right now and I leave it in there overnight. I love what it does when you come back out in the morning and you peel off the wax paper. This is also another incredibly beautiful, beautifully enjoyable um, moment. So down in the bottom right hand corner, I'm just previewing uh, another abstract landscape method. And this one's just as easy as the wax paper, except it involves just paint and you, mark up four squares or four rectangles and paint some paint onto each of the rectangles. So uh, on each one, however, you place the paint a little differently. So if you're into abstract landscapes, you might like to watch that one. I'll make sure I put a link of, to that at the very end of the video, or maybe I should put a link to it in the one in the comment section down below as well. So that's the next video on abstract landscapes. I'm absolutely in love with abstract landscapes. So here I've come in with a little bit of gold paint. So that's a tube of Holbein paint. And then the final thing there, are that's the sound that these beautiful um, markers make. These markers are Posca, Uni Posca pens. And that is a gold with a nib that is 2.5. So pretty fat that uh, beautiful nib. And I go around and I add lines and dots and all, I just completely enjoy myself um, looking at all the beautiful uh, detail that I can add. And part of the beauty of using the wax paper is that it's created all this texture. And when I'm adding little tiny embellishments, I'm constantly looking at the naturally, the natural occurring shapes that the wax paper created for me on the paper. It's a little bit time consuming because letting it dry overnight, it does take a little bit more time. If you remove the wax paper early, you will still get a beautiful mark. It's just that all the marks will be soft. It's quite a, a lovely method. You'll see me using that in other wax paper methods, uh, other wax paper landscapes, where I take some of the wax paper off. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Please give me a thumbs up uh, and subscribe. That would be wonderful. You can also do super thanks now, which uh, will mean that I'm going to be asking those who give super thanks to um, give me ideas and I'll be doing stuff especially for those people. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.